You live in a fake castle, leeching off your accidental millionaire loser friend playing black metal in your bedroom. Uh, it's doom metal. Who the fuck asked you? Well, he's right. It was black. Then we went through a sludge phase. Now it's more doom. mind introducing yourselves for the mic? Uh, I'm Mal. And what do you do for this band? Oh. I'm the okay. shit hooker for this band. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you wear, you wear nice that. shirts and you uh, you do a lot of running around and yelling. I'm wearing nice shirts. When? Yeah, Alright, yeah. moving on. He's the awkward guy. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Uh, yeah, I do vocals alongside CZ. Uh, and a bit of scene and noise sampler all those shit. Um, my name is Tan. Uh, I'm the drummer for the band. And I have CD to do the illustration, uh, illustration as well. Some some illustration. Uh, I am I'm Apis. I'm playing guitar. Hello. I'm CZ for the vocal. I'm Ikin. I'm playing the bass. And the name of your band is? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gao. <laughs> some people say Gao. Some people say Gao. But the Gua. pronunciation is Gao. 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 Something. So, uh, we're sitting in Room Api right now uh, on a day where there isn't a show and they were nice enough to let us use the space for our interview. And you guys were nice enough to all show up for the interview. So, thank you. Yeah. Let's uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, how long has your band been around? Um, actually, I just joined them last year, somewhere in February before the Kaiyu show. Yeah, yes, in Brisbane. How long were you guys around uh, before that? When did you actually form? Thirteen. Yeah. Late, late 2013. Late, yeah. late or late? Late, late. 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 Because I... Choi was playing bass when I started. Mm. Mm. So, uh, the Kailash show was actually mid. <laughs> mid. mid. 2000. It, it was February. February 2014, I guess. Okay. Uh, so, you guys were around uh, about a year before the Kailash show? More or less. Okay. Had you been in any bands before that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
for before we go, uh, I used to do vocals as well for the band called Trash Ohoi. Trash Ohoi. Yeah, yeah, it's a trash core band with uh, called Stick Death. What happens next? Influence, and yep, that's it. <laughs> and for me, uh, last time I used to play with Ikin. It's a drummer as well in a band called The Pips. We play like this poppy, mushy, but quite very Teenage empowered band. Teenage empowered <laughs> band. So I'm just a drummer. Like. What, what does uh, female empowered mean? But like pop punk kind of stuff? Yeah, pop punk yeah, kind of stuff. Pop, like punk, folk. Yeah. Folk. Less on punk, more on the popish side of the Yeah, future. like really pop. Like really, not bubble gum, uh, <laughs> but really pop. Uh. Okay. And then I play this band called Jahat. I play the drum as well. Uh, we play like this trash, trash, fast core stuff. Uh, we used to have a split with Mango Band, Trash Ohoi. Oh, hey, Kesumat. Yeah. Kesumat. Kesumat. Uh, yeah, 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 not Jahat, Kesumat. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the name of my own band, man. Uh, we have a split. Was it in seven inches? Seven, ah, seven inch feet. Seven inch feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got history right. together, man. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of us, most, mostly all of us, all of us got history together. Okay. Yeah. What, what about you? I'm playing guitar. Last time I'm playing guitar for Curie Lessonary. Okay. Okay, then I'm work, worker for Gosh. So I don't have any band. This is my you, first band. This is your first band? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and you were in a pop punk band before. Sorry? You were in a pop punk band before. Um actually <laughs> there, there was quite a description uh, yeah. of the peeps. I don't know what what what, what do you think? Okay. I don't know, I don't have <laughs> Okay. Um don't but it, it sounds like it's safe to say that Gaur is a, a departure from what you guys used to play before. Yeah. It's kind of heavy, sludgy. Uh, <laughs> uh, how, I guess, how did you guys get together? Um, and how did you decide on this type of music? Got together actually based on, um, we used to hang around a lot. Uh, most of the time in Umapi, or if not in Umapi, maybe in Bangsa, at Alat's place and Champ's place. Uh, I guess spend the night, Drinking and talk. So after a while, huh? we wanted to make a band with Along. Ah, the, the history before Gao, which I don't even know much, but because I got recruited like maybe a uh, little we... bit, maybe a few months after they decided to form this kind of band. And, like properly, um, uh... mm. <laughs> uh, and then. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, actually, like at first we we want to make like a funny OA band <laughs> with one of our friend called Alo, and we've actually jammed a couple of times oh. with a different guitarist. Yeah, yeah with uh, Malan. With Malan. Uh, but then he decided to quit the band. <laughs> so then I think we started. I think we think like we should. Focus. I mean, like take Gao seriously. Yeah. So, how did you go from wanting to do a funny oi band to being a band that's neither funny nor oi? <laughs> I think because. I mean, I, I I guess what I'm asking is, did you set out to play this kind of music, or was it a natural? It, did it just kind of happen that oh, you ended up like yeah, this? Yeah, I think it's just gonna happen. Uh, and I think me, it's I guess more... it's not not really because maybe. A few years back ago, I started to listen to this doom, sludgy, punk band. And then, before I joined them, before I joined Gao, actually my uh, interests are more towards those kind of music. And before I joined, actually, uh, Cham, Choi, our previous basis, uh, and Apit already made few songs. So once I join, I, I've joined them, uh, and from there we started to maybe uh, re how you say restructure again where our music 
music direction and all sorts. And then, of course, it has to be like a mutual consent because uh, <laughs> if I'm being too selfish, I'm not gonna play with Gao. Maybe I'm gonna form a different kind of band which <coughs> I prefer. But yeah, because like Champ, more towards a uh, fast beat kind of uh, tempo uh, song or music. But, but I think me, a lot of us like likes to listen to all this heavy stuff, mm. right? Me uh, personally, I just want to uh, maybe explore the heavy side or heavy part of the punk movement or punk music but it's just it's just too typical because most of the punk band are stereotype the type with like BB, BB or crust or metal so we call it ancient BB like, <laughs> ancient BB. <laughs> like really but ancient no, no offense <laughs> we, we still do listen to those kind of music <coughs> but we go I think for me, I don't know about them. <laughs> this is like my my personal opinion. I think we want to maybe venture or explore different side of the heaviness essence. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about that. Okay. Then when I when I first came to Rumapi, uh, I did notice there are a lot of DV bands, there are a lot of cross bands, mm-hmm. and like on a show, like you'd see maybe three in a row, um, and it does kind of feel like. You're seeing the same thing over and yeah. over again. So, am I correct in, in understanding you that, uh, in a way, the, the musical direction was uh, a reaction to all the DB bands? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure because if you or maybe just see... an attempt to, to play something different. Yeah, I think it's maybe more that like is our uh, maybe that is our intention. <coughs> but I think since we are playing this kind of music, not much of the crowds of or the people would really listen to this kind of music because it's quite boring compared to the beat you have the the energy inside the music right because they're fast and everything or oh. heavy bands or sludgy band it's like it's very mm, stagnant <laughs> boring I, I think sludge <laughs> is what happens when uh uh, when cross punks get older, but we yeah. can yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is what we we uh, receive from the from other people. <laughs> I mean, they all say that. Yeah, man, well, you guys are still young. No, we look young actually, but <laughs> our age is not that young. <laughs> I think you get angrier when you play this kind of, I mean, <laughs> like really heavy stuff, you know. Mm. You get really ang- like angrier, but it's more like different like, ways. Like, I mean, like, you're zen, like, you're more peaceful, peaceful, you could exist with your anger, you know, like, uh, anchors. <laughs> instead of last time, right? Like.
it sounds like your writing process is very democratic. Does does everybody take part in the songwriting? Mm. Most of the riffs or guitar riffs made by artists. Uh, and then uh, let's say you drafted, drafted a, a raw or something that is uh, something new. So we send it to our phone. It just it just recorded by his phone and then we listen. And then from there, we're all gonna give our own suggestion or opinion to get the things get together. And so let's say this part need more slower style then we have, we have the top there's no I'm the boss you should listen to me no <laughs> no <laughs> and most of the time we we just drunk <laughs> so yeah who we'll gives a fuck anyway so you come up with most of the guitarists but the arrangements are uh, are done by the band the structure mm. I think probably eighty, yeah, eighty to ninety percent from a piece. Yeah, and then from there. We... How did you end up with the two vocals? <laughs> vocals, yeah. So before, CZ, oh, CZ, you want to talk? It's like I'm doing all the talk right now. <laughs> well, it, whose idea was it to have two vocals? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny story actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's one night. Uh, Choi, CZ, HM. Chem, CZ, how do Hi, it was three of us. Uh, CZ, me, and Chem were having a drink somewhere in Kibintang area. Uh, and then CZ just got back from work, and Chem as well. Uh, we met at Find Us, and then from there we decided to have a drink in Kibintang. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Before CZ join us, actually it was me doing all the vocals uh, and then since I'm trying so hard to be so different so I've added this effect and those noise or sampler that I really want to uh, it's like a challenge, challenge myself I think uh, so when I'm doing that, I feel like um, I'm out of hand so I've been thinking, actually I've been thinking around about about having another vocal, vocalist so that I can be the the backup one. I can do, I can focus on my <laughs> the shitty stuff. So from from that night. So you wanted the second vocal so you could focus on the noise element. Yeah, yeah. Not the not the second vocal, the first vocal. You want to be vocalist. Yeah, so because okay. I'm gonna be the second vocal. Okay. So after yeah. <laughs> after that night actually. We uh, during during our drinking session and then we have a talk. Maybe at first we we were talking about the the artwork, right? The the Gao artwork from the demo and the the artwork actually made by Champ and we were discussing about that and then from there I don't know the the idea of getting the second vocalist just pop out and then uh, at that time. CZ was around and then we just invited her. Uh, were you familiar with the music before you joined the band? No. No, not really. <laughs> Still new with it. Uh, and you've never been in a band before, right? No. This is my first one. The first, the first band that I ever joined. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what were your thoughts? Were you nervous? So you always get nervous, right? Yeah, I, I always get nervous. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Had you wanted to sing for a band before? I don't know. They just invited me, so yeah, why why not give it a try? Yeah. So yeah, finally I'm here. <laughs> At what point uh, did this happen? Like near the end of 2013? Uh, early, early of early 2014. 2014. Early 2014. Yeah. So yeah. you joined the band early 2014, and a month later you're opening for Kailasa. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Actually, that, that was a test for her and Ikin. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you guys joined basically right before the Kalasa show. Actually, one week before the show, <laughs> like um, Apit um, asked me, he asked me, um, he said, Ikin, you can play guitar. It's me, and you can play bass. I said, Oh no, 
but I never try to play the bass because bass is bigger than myself. So <laughs> he said, no, no, you can do it. Um, and during that time, I don't have anything to do. Um, even my first band, uh, we've been uh, hibernating for so long. So I told myself, why not I give it a try? So we start practicing like a week before the show. So you knew the Kailasa show was coming up? I don't know. And <laughs> until <laughs> when, when did you find out that you guys were playing Kailasa? <laughs> Two days before the actual show. And yeah. then Api said, it's actually for the Kailasa show. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Had you guys played shows before that show? Before Kailasa? Yeah, a few shows. Okay. But not that many, right? Because I don't think I'd seen you before Kailasa. Uh, I think uh, we played in Rumapi like a few times before. Okay. I think before but before, before that, that mostly Rumapi. Yeah. Ah, Rumapi. Uh, but during that time, CZ and Ikin uh, haven't joined us yet. Uh-huh. Maybe the biggest stage you guys have ever played, right? In front of one of the biggest bands that. Maybe the first and the last. The last. What were your feelings? Were you excited, nervous? Were yeah. you fans of that band? Are you Carlos fans? Uh, you could say no. They're not gonna listen to this. I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm not like a huge fan. But I still listen to Kalisa because there's a period when I listen to D beat stuff a lot, like Victims, Nepsi, uh, Misanthropic, the Swedish band. So it just happened that I discovered about Kalisa when Kalisa do did a split uh, seven with Victims, and from there, oh. Okay, and then from there I started to listen, not, not to their entire albums or to their entire songs, maybe a few songs and then I oh, would say quite, quite, quite good. Yeah. And then it just happened to be that uh, they're a big uh, band now. <laughs> had you guys already recorded your four song uh, EP at that point? Four song EP? Yeah. During? Uh, by the Kalas Show. I, we came up with uh, the self title of Damon. Yeah, the cassette. Yeah. So that was out when you guys played yeah. uh, with Kalasa. Yeah. When did you guys record that? Early of. Eh, late. Late 2013, I think. Out. Early December. Yeah. December, and then. Yeah, until mid of January, we finished all the recordings, and then from, uh, from there, we work on the artwork, layout, and everything. Did you guys record it before uh, Sissy and... Uh... Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. Because so you guys aren't on that recording? We, we've already planned to add the second vocal for the demo, but it happened to be, it's a bit rush. It's a bit rushing. So, and then we decided, never mind. Maybe we're gonna do the next, the next one in, uh, together with the Sissy's vocal and uh, Ikin on the bass. How do you decide who sings what? How do we decide? Okay, maybe uh, speak to you and think you. Yeah, I think actually it's between me and CZ. Uh, yeah. So just put it out. Maybe like using this part and I sing this part and we cooperate it together. And then there's a part where maybe we need just the screaming part, so I'll do those kind of stuff, or maybe we. And then, yeah, that's the advantage of having two vocalists and with CZ uh, because maybe you can explore something else instead of me doing all the shouting and screaming for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys work on the lyrics together? We've tried. <laughs> Actually, uh, maybe, maybe if we give it a time, maybe CZ can write the lyrics because uh, <coughs> at the moment Mango is doing all the lyrics I told you I'm the shit worker on this band <laughs> <laughs> at one point you add the noise element uh, let's see for example uh, most of the time during the how do you say uh, yeah, uh, part slow. You mean the slow part? Yeah, the slow part of the the song. So from there, I will I, I will have it listen and then 
um, try to let's say if we really need to put this noise or seal we, we will put it if not just leave it but and and again it has to be uh, accept by everyone else it, it's not gonna be me trying to be <laughs> so selfish and then do all the noise and then we can't hear any <laughs> guitar riff or the bass line you know maybe the season vocal or change drum so do you have all that stuff figured out beforehand mm. or is it some bit improvised actually i'm trying to avoid being the improvised guy because but, but to me personally I, I will remember all all the I don't know all the things that I do with my stuff. So then from there we'll practice and then have a reason. Yeah yeah. <laughs> it's not improvised at all. <laughs> okay. So between like what you practice when you guys rehearse and what you record, it sounds like pretty set. Like what you hear live is what you guys play. <laughs> is that yeah. fair? I mean I don't know. You can't complain much. Yeah. Can't complain much. Depends on the venue itself. But then, game to me is like, let's fuck it, man. <laughs> as long as we're all happy, then it's okay. Not we're all, I mean, even the audience itself. As long as they are happy, we are happy doing it. Well, what do you want the audience to get out of your music? What do you want them to come away with? Wish that the they will sponsor us any <laughs> pedal, guitar pedals, yeah. or maybe amps. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, give us, maybe give us some love. <laughs> let me let me rephrase that. How would you want people to feel after listening to music? Uh, angry. Angry. I want them to feel pissed off. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, pissed off of anything. Maybe from the music or maybe from. I don't know, maybe they are live or something. I don't know about them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you keep pointing that mic towards me, man. <laughs> you, keep, fair. You, you keep talking. Like I, I'm just, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep I'm my just, mouth I'm, shut. I'm, I'm just trying to find where the sound's coming from. I just want everybody's happy, that's all. Okay. <laughs> and have fun Aww. and enjoy, that's all. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs>
so right now you guys are working on your second recording, mm. uh, which is two songs. Mm. Yes. How's that going? Be okay. Mango is the mixer. He's the sheet worker. Yeah, that's it. Uh, actually, we. Because I don't know technical sheet, man. <laughs> He's the only. He and. He and uh, Afis know all this technical stuff. You guys are quite yourselves. Know. What? Yeah. 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 We're so proud about, about it, actually. <laughs> no, not that kind of proud, but. Yeah. At least we did something for the sake of DIY. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. Uh, Is that why you did it? Just uh, just to have it in your own hands? No, actually, actually DIY? The I don't have money. La. We're broke. <laughs> we're broke. <laughs> we're broke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what, what, okay. what what can you tell me about this new recording? Does it sound be... along the same lines as the last one? Uh, actually, there's a, a bit of a surprise element that we came up with. Um, uh, first of all, maybe from the vocals. And then, yeah, since I got my synth and noise maker thingy to work around this time so so I managed to put that one uh, as well inside the recording uh, and then maybe for the song it's gonna be different than what if you have listened to our, our previous song it's gonna be maybe a little bit different than the first one <laughs> yeah. how would you describe it? Um, I don't know. Is it heavier? Is it slower? Is it faster? Is it? Some part is heavier and some part is slower. Surprise! Yeah, surprise! <laughs> surprise! Okay. Fair enough. You guys are recording it yourselves. I'm assuming you're also releasing it yourselves. Are you gonna release it also? Mm -hmm. Probably. Probably. Depends. Is it under your label? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, I was planning to release Dao on my label. What's your label called? The uh, Bitnik Collective. The after Bitnik has closed down, so I decided to like produce or release like local bands, and at the same time, still focusing on uh, art. Uh, I mean, artworks from the DIY group of stuff. And yeah, let's say oh okay, <laughs> let's say if we can find like few of more labels or these rules to participate or to collaborate with this release, then okay, sure. <laughs> we don't, we don't. I, I don't, I don't mind. Are you looking for a specific format? Is it going to be on a seven-inch cassette? CD, hmm. Bandcamp, so Bandcamp, depending on the Bandcamp, <laughs> <laughs> Bandcamp. Yeah, of course, we will upload our songs into oh, our Bandcamp God. account. Because I got to tell you, I'm so sick of all these local cassettes. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, owned a cassette player since 2000, maybe 2002 or 2003. So that is why. So every that time, every why. time, that, that's the reason, why. the main purpose why we want to. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but again, listen but again. I'm, I'm 35 years old. I grew up on cassettes. <laughs> and, 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 and here's the thing. As somebody who grew up on cassettes, all my old albums were on cassettes. Almost My first Slayer album was on a cassette. My first Sepultura album was on a cassette. Like Everything I owned in the past was on a cassette. Cassettes fucking suck. <laughs> the sound sucks. The, sound the format cheap, sucks. Mm -hmm. they, they, Is it cheap? they get jammed and they don't last long. Yeah, I think so every time, like, I, I, I think it's great that like the DIY scene, like, mm -hmm. keep it's cost low. I understand all that, but every time some kid hands me a cassette, I want to break it in half <laughs> and tell him to give me some right. paper. <laughs> Don't fall, man. So we won't, we won't pass you the cassette after this. <laughs> but, as, as long as long as there's a band camp uh, release, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, um, band camp, definitely band camp, because it's like a matter of choice. Because let's say if you want to release maybe a CD or some a record, vinyl, seven inch or twelve inch, the cost. To produce those format is quite not quite. Expensive. It's really expensive. So let's say if I'm gonna do it alone, it's not really something that I'm yeah. able to. So that's why the, the the second choice of releasing it is by doing cassettes. Uh, I know even me 
also not that big fan of cassette because of the sound quality of after times it will get deteriorate deteriorate sorry or maybe the, the cassette will got i know some this moldy mold ah the mold mold and everything but again for the sake of uh, something that is tangible i think cassette is more enough because you still have band cams you still yeah uh, band cam or sound cards which we don't have Band camp, well, you still have something in digital format for you to listen anytime that you want. To me, cassette is like, it's the cheapest way, but at the same time, you still can have something that is tangible, collectible, uh, then yeah, it's cheap, mainly because of che- it's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is way much punk than anything else. I don't know. Okay. Speaking of more punk than anything else. Thank you for the second. <laughs> well, no, it's um, it sounds like it sounds like all of you guys come from more of a punk background. Is that fair? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're wearing your Metallica shirt right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a punk. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to agree with me. Like, uh, I'm just asking. Punk background, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because the first punk rock. Man, I'm I'm really I really serious, and eh, not not really serious. That I really dig was Green Day. Maybe you can see, eh, maybe you can say that we're all from the punk. Even though before Green Day's days, yeah, it oh, was the... it was yeah, <laughs> no. kid trying to explore things yeah. and stuff. But also, I mean, you guys are all part of the room office scene, which is I mean, this is a punk yeah, DIY space, and, yeah. you know. Even if the music isn't always can ride on the line between punk and metal, uh, it seems like the mentality is very punk. Um, this podcast that I'm doing is like I'm calling it a doom metal podcast, but I think about half the bands are going to be like people like you, I guess, who who come from more of like the hardcore side, mm-hmm. and people like me who come from more of the metal side. Um, I'm just curious if you guys see a difference between like this kind of like sludgy hardcore. That Gar plays and Kylesa plays, I like more of like the doom metal uh, side of things. Mm. Like, is there is there a difference in the music? Is there a difference in the mentality? Mm. Is there is there a difference in the haircuts? <laughs> haircuts. <laughs> I don't know lah. Like in Malaysia, like in Malaysia, the metal scene is more like it's not it's not not so much DIY. Uh, for us coming from the DIY scene so I think we have different sets of mentality and the bro bro mentality so and like all this metal metal band it's not that you have to explain what that means what's, what's the bro bro mentality yeah uh, bro is like bro bro to me <laughs> it's like big brother kind of scene you know uh, where we as a kid can't really say much, can't do this, can't do that because there's somebody is watching us. It's like Big Brother is watching us. So bro, actually, bro bro is from bro. <laughs> so it's like bro bro, bro, bro stuff. Uh, uh, so what do you mean? Like, do you feel like the, the metal scene is more... But I think that's in a Malaysia context. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, KL, I, I'm not sure about the metal Are scene they... outside of KL. Mm. So you feel like the the metal scene has more of people watching more people are paying more attention to it. The, the sludgy side, the blue moppy side is more underground. Mm-hmm. I'm asking a question. I don't know the answer. No. I think I think metal is still underground. I mean they they are still underground. It's just that um, I don't know why the I mean like our DIY is different. Not different as in like our perspective of being in a band, like having. A punk rock house, I mean space like Rumah Api is different because um, like for, for us, uh, Gao is more like uh, I mean coming from like this community I mean like mentality that always talk about community I think it's different with certain metal scene where they are like more fame and glory <laughs> yeah like more making music you know like trying to hit beat yeah. and stuff you know it is a good but, it's a good yeah, thing in a way but yeah but 
for for us that having this DIY hard coupon background is more like doing what we love, you know, like, doing like I mean they do that that they they they, they love as well, but it's just that um, how what? It it kind of seems like, uh, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is my take on it. Yeah. It kind of feels like, at least in the metal scene here in Malaysia, the metal bands, quote unquote metal bands, yeah. like maybe they consider themselves metal. Yeah. I personally, never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it feels it feels it feels like they're more in it for themselves, mm-hmm. and you know, you use the word community, and to me, that's mm. whether a band is like Atomic Death who plays Rumapi yeah. quite regularly yeah. or Sachin Hassan or Tools of the Trade yeah. or Gaur and the funny thing is about Atomic, Atomic Death Sajah Hassan they all coming from a punk scene I mean even yeah. Atomic Death I mean like all. almost like regardless of the music the community is the community mm. you can play whatever music you want but you even have like the Garrison or Reggae mm. yeah mm. so it's like the mentality comes first and the music yeah, comes second yeah. yeah. I asked this question to my friends uh, Emmy Emmy from mm. Tools of the Trade about maybe two years ago, and I was asking him why there aren't any doom metal bands in Malaysia. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I I hadn't, well, I, I hadn't seen you guys until you guys played with Kailasa. Um, and I'm trying to think if I've seen any other doom metal bands, and before last year, no. I think like, it was like really old in the nineties, called okay. hmm. like Moda. They used to play like Reason, Reason, but that was that was in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. And then early of 2000. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then Doom Metal, like, but then Doom here, they always get integrated with the metal scene. And yeah, so they, they just hang out in metal scene, they just play at metal shows. But I think Gao is not that Doom, you know? Yeah. And we're not metal, you know? <laughs> yeah. I still prefer Sludge Punk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, what, what, but what's what's the difference between sludge maybe, punk or sludge core and doom metal? I think maybe uh, our roots are from the punk rock scene, but then our music is sludge punk rock kind of music. It's, it's like hardcore slow down, basically. Yeah, sort of. So maybe that's why I do. I still don't prefer to play myself or go as a doom metal band because we're not that metal except for my shirt tonight <laughs> even metal guys is, is not like that kind of for metal me we always right? for me we listening to catharsis and this hero have a big influence on us uh, i mean like those heavy parts and like it's really metallic and heavy stuff you know, like slow yeah, yeah. I think maybe because people always associate uh, say doom with metal, doom with sludge. Well, I mean, it's Black Sabbath. That's why. <laughs> Black Sabbath. <laughs> sort of. So maybe that's why doom metal, I don't think we're that. Not there yet. My, my Filipino friends say that uh, the reason why there's more doom metal bands there is because they have an easier time smoking weed. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, so uh, that's another reason because we we rarely smoke weed but we are heavy on drink uh, alcohol. So yeah, yeah, so yeah this is why we're not doom metal. <laughs> we're sludge fun. <laughs> so basically sludge alcohol, doom <laughs> pot. Is that what you're saying? A little bit of weed. Okay. Alright. I think we solved this. I think uh, we did, we did some important work here.
you guilty to me!